You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Thanks for letting us be part of your morning. Now again, Catholic Chicago. to diakonia, a call to service. Diakonia is the Greek word for service. It's also the root word for deacon. I'm Deacon Jim Norman, Director, Vicar for Deacons for the Archdiocese of Chicago. Delighted to be here with you today. And joining me as always is Deacon Dave Brinsick. Hi, Dave, how are you? Hello, Jim. Hello, everyone. This show is dedicated to talking about the call to service for us all. And we're delighted today to have with us Deacon Tom Lambert, who's co-chair of the Chicago Archdiocese Commission on Mental Illness, and Tracy Sherva, who's a member of that commission. Welcome, Tom, and welcome, Tracy. Hi. Thanks. Good to be here with you. Yeah, thank you. As we begin this morning, we'd love to get to know each of you a bit better, if you could share a bit of your background. Well, um, I'll start. Um, I'm... Uh, Married for 54 years, have four daughters, um, been a deacon for going on 40 years now, so uh, been around for a while, and um, been involved in mental illness, mental health ministry for the past 30 years. And we have our oldest daughter has a mental illness, and so that um, got us into this whole ministry because we were looking for help in uh, helping her. And then uh, that led us to NAMI, the National Alliance of Mental Illness, and it also led us to helping and finding out what more we could do within the church. So, Tracy? Sure, sure. So I'm a mom, stepmom. I've got five great grandkids that I love. Um, retired, I worked in the food industry for about 35 years in the test kitchens over at Kraft Foods. Um, I don't have any mental health background whatsoever, but I became involved in the mental health world when my son out of nowhere um, came down with a mental illness, and that really changed our world. Well, Tracy, can you tell us a bit more about, I understand someone had, had reached out to you and kind of you started you on this journey of working with mental illness? Yeah, so um, when he got ill. I really didn't know anything at all about mental health stuff. I'd never experienced that. So I got very involved with NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and took education classes, became a support facilitator, but things just were not clicking for me. I was really, really struggling. I was overwhelmed myself with anxiety um, and guilt and depression. Um, because I was so worried about, about him. And one day, one of my friends called me and said, hey, do you want to go and pray the rosary with me? Let's go pray the rosary for our boys. And I hate to admit to all you wonderful, holy people, I was like, oh, maybe I should do that. That sounds like maybe a good idea. <laughs> and so I went and we started praying the rosary almost every single day for our sons that we were worried about. And over time, things shifted. It really changed for me. My anxiety lifted. I, I felt better. And it dawned on me that what was missing, I had all this education and, you know, a sort kind of a support network around me. But I didn't, my faith connection hadn't been there. And I needed that. I really needed that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Bad stuff was going on all around me. 
But inside, I had a much better sense of peace and a way to approach it that actually helped the situation, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is it common for people with, um, you know, with people with um, mental illness, their loved ones, to experience the, the kind of feelings that you had? Is that a common thing for families? And from from my experience in in doing support groups, yes. In fact, sometimes family members feel like they're um, dealing with PTSD, anxiety, all of that themselves, trying to help their loved ones because they don't know what to do. It's really hard. And then how has that shaped or formed, Tom, then the mission of the Commission on Mental Illness? Well, I, I think Tracy's story is just a, a beautiful example of what people go through and what the possibilities are when you make that connection to spirituality. And I was at a meeting recently in Washington, D.C. at the American Psychiatric Association, and they were making the same point that our spiritual self, our spirituality is so important in terms of dealing with mental health issues. And this is what I have found over the years, uh, both with Rita and I, and in our um, trying to get our daughter help, was the, the basis of our, our faith, our prayer life, helped us manage those situations and going through them. And, and like Tracy so beautifully said, it doesn't make it necessarily all that, you know, more easier. Stuff goes on, um, but it does make it um, more, I think, powerful within you to be able to go through those situations. And so that's what we have tried to spread that word, if you will, through the commission. So is the commission walking then with um, families and those who are experiencing mental, mental illness? Yeah, we, we, we frame it in uh, the words awareness, acceptance, and accompaniment. Okay. So it's there's a three-pronged aspect, if you will. One is the awareness. Is <clears throat> There's a lot of stigma and misunderstanding about mental illnesses, and unfortunately, people's conceptions go by, you know, what's printed in the newspaper or what. So we try to get the facts out. We try to, and through the awareness, uh, through workshops, through talks, through however we can reach people to get the the facts about mental illness and what it really is and how it affects not only the person, but the families. So the family unit is, is uh, affected. So, and it's very common. So it's like 20% or more of people in society, as well as sitting in church, you know, in our pews, people dealing with mental illnesses and people, uh, families who are affected. So we're trying to reach those people to create awareness and then acceptance, accepting people who have mental illnesses, um, having them belong to our parishes, get the feeling of belonging to our parishes, not just including them, but belonging. So that means, you know, going that extra step and accepting them for who they are without judgment, without, you know, um, any, you know, preconceived notions that we sometimes have to deal with. And then accompaniment. Accompaniment is so important. And accompanying people, in, from my definition, means walking with them and uh, praying with them and listening to them. One of the most, in my 30 years experience, one of the most healing things we can do, and, and Tracy's story is a great example of it, is listen to one another. What, how, how can we help one another well, we listen to them, listen to what they have to say without making judgments and then praying with them because um, we're, we're spiritual people and that's that's how we become whole. We pay attention to our body, we pay attention to our mind, but we also need to pay attention to our spiritual being and connect all three. Tom, you mentioned you'd been committed to this area for more, almost 30 years or a bit more. Um, are there, over that 30 years, successes, things that give you hope and optimism that you could point to? Yes. Um, uh, you, you know, uh, Tehar D. Shadan wrote a prayer, trust in the slow work of God. So <laughs> it's the slow work of God. 
uh, you know, and, and Lord, give me patience and give it to me now, you know, so um, <clears throat> you, you have to, and that helps with, you know, managing this whole process is that trusting in the work of God and sometimes that's slow. So when we started, <clears throat> there wasn't, uh, you know, uh, much awareness, there wasn't much um, acceptance of people with mental illness. And so uh, it was really kind of an uphill battle and uh, just getting into parishes to give talks um, and so on. But then oh, uh, the other the other piece is that science has really found an awful lot about the brain in the last 20 years, more so than the past, you know, millennia. So uh, we're now discovering how the brain works uh, down to the finer details and how um, these, and this again, you know, is where when science and religion come together, um, we find that, you know, what we're doing, and this was the point of the meeting at the American Psychiatric Association, is that the brain functions better when it's aware of its spiritual self. Um, and, and those are my words, but that's basically what they were saying. So, yeah, so uh, it is growing. Um, when people come out and speak publicly about it, so that, you know, like I've gone around the country talking about it. So when people hear me or or even in a in a, what's been amazing, let me put it this way. What's been amazing for me is if I give a homily at a mass, no matter where I am, Chicago, Florida, wherever I've been, there are lines of people who come up to me and say, I've never told anyone before or um, I've been dealing with this for a long time. I had a person who um, they're they're loved one died by suicide 40 years ago he started talking to me and he broke out into tears so these are burdens people are carrying but don't have an opportunity to talk about so over time as i've seen you know this awareness grow we've had you know movie stars talk about it we've had um music stars and all this so as the awareness grows the the healing helps uh, that helps the healing and it begins so we, I, i'm seeing more of that um, but what we're also seeing is that a greater anxiety and depression in society due to a, a multitude of reasons. And we have then a lack of resources to deal with that from a physical standpoint. And we need more, you know, mental health services and we need more church involvement. That, that's I'm, probably, go ahead, go ahead, Dave. I'm going to say, I'm sure the pandemic had even made things even, even harder and uh, made the situation worse, I would think. Yeah, a big spike in anxiety, especially around young people, especially around the youth. Um, it's very, very difficult. And why do you think? Why, why the youth? Well, I think because of a lot of the isolation and in a prime time in their lives when social, being together, being in school, learning to relay, relate to each other, and then all of a sudden that's all shut down. Um, I remember my granddaughter wanting for Christmas to go to school, <laughs> which I thought, wow, wow because yeah. she missed her friends. Yeah. Great. You know? Let's, uh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, what we'd like to get a glimpse of from both Tom and Tracy is where the commission is working and where can we see this work in effect within the Archdiocese of Chicago. So we'll be back in just a moment and we'll pick up there. The cup that I must drink. Are you Catholic Charity's 75th annual celebration of giving is underway in support of those who are struggling to make ends meet every day. 
Individuals, families, colleagues, neighbors, parishioners, and friends purchased thousands of gifts and basic necessities to ensure Catholic Charities' clients and their families have a joyful Christmas morning. There are many ways to get involved, including online wish lists that make giving easier than ever before. If you can join us in this special Chicago Christmas tradition as volunteers and donors, please email us at cog at catholiccharities.net. That's cog at catholiccharities.net. Or call 312-655-7401 in Cook County and 847-782-4210 in Lake County. Thank you for helping us spread Christmas cheer this year throughout Cook and Lake Counties. This is year 44 for me teaching. When I started here, there were teachers here that had taught me when I was a student. Now I'm the old person. <laughs> right now, I teach junior high math. I love when kids find what I'm teaching to be fun and they get it. They see that light bulb go off and it's a thrill. People are always amazed. What? what? You're here for 44 years? It's hard for me to believe, frankly. <laughs> I love what I do. Every summer I think, oh, I miss the classroom. Even on the weekends, I think I can't wait to get back on Monday and teach those quadratic equations. <laughs> Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach. Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. Do you have an old bicycle that's not being used? Consider donating it to Catholic Charities Veterans Bike Project of Lake County. Skilled volunteers are refurbishing bicycles to make them safe and ready to be used by veterans to get to and from their new places of work. We also gratefully accept financial contributions that are used to purchase bike helmets and other safety accessories. Our veterans have faithfully served the United States and now it is our privilege to serve them. For more information on the Veterans Bike Project of Lake County, call 847-782-4219. That's 847-782-4219. Diaconia, a call to service. I'm Deacon Jim Norman, Vicar for Deacons with the Archdiocese of Chicago, along with Deacon, Deacon Dave Brinsick. Uh, we're here with Deacon Tom Lambert, co-chair of the Chicago Archdiocese Commission on Mental Illness, along with Tracy Sherva, who's a member of that commission. We were talking, Tom, about your 30 years of experience and what you had seen over those 30 years, and you talked about the importance of awareness, acceptance, and accompaniment. Um, I think Dave had some follow-up questions to give us a glimpse of what your work looks like within the Archdiocese of Chicago today. Tracy, I understand that uh, the Mental uh, Com Health Commission is doing some wonderful work in the Arlington Heights area with some of the parishes there. Could you explain that to us? Sure, sure. We have a mental health ministry. We call it Meeting Mental Health with Grace, um, and it spans across St. James, St. Edna's, and Our Lady of the Wayside in Arlington Heights. We initially, when the, our ministry started, it was suggested that perhaps we join forces with the other two parishes. And it's really worked out well for us because we have a team of about 10 people that span across the different parishes. So we get input from all areas, as well as it's a great way to get, get the word out. Um, so if we do a bulletin article, it appears in all three churches' bulletins. We kicked off our ministry. We did a series of five nights on mental health, um, pulled it right from Deacon Tom's uh, mental health ministry website. 
Um, each night covered a different topic. We had what is mental illness, spend an evening with a psychiatrist, um, spirituality, mental illness, and resources. Um, I'll be honest with you, when we first set up the series, we got a room that would hold 60. We were hoping we'd get 40 people. We had over 120 show up. Wow. And we realized in that moment how just how big the need was. So that number one in five um, people dealing with mental health issues was really true. And folks were really, they came out. And honestly, we did a survey at the end and we got close to a hundred surveys filled out. Um, people wanted more. So we, but unfortunately that all happened um, in November of 2019. So right before the pandemic. So right when people needed it, we had to shift gears because we couldn't do support groups or live meetings. So we shifted gears a little bit and we created um, a website with resources because people were looking for resources. And one of our priests said, you know, people are calling me and I don't know where to send them. Could you maybe update and do your webpage, have it be resources. So we have faith-based resources, prayers, novenas, um, beautiful things like that, as well as um, Christian counselors, um, Catholic charities, um, some NAMI information, that type of thing. We also have a page on education because sometimes when people are dealing with things like anxiety or depression, they're never really sure when they should get help. Is this normal? Is it not? And so we we literally, we lifted stuff right from NAMI and put it on the site. Then we we hosted an evening webinar on, on depression where we had a panel of folks come and talk. We had a clinician talk about depression, symptoms, treatments. We had a young woman who was living with depression share her personal story. We had a priest talk about spirituality and depression. And then we had a woman from our parish who does, um, she's a holistic life coach who uses scripture to provide support and self-care for people. And um, it was it was really well attended. We had a little over a hundred people dial in for it. Um, so now we're just, we're planning our next event. We've, we've done a support group. Um, we do bulletin articles. We're just trying to really raise that awareness level and provide that support for folks in the parish. Wow, sounds great. Uh, could you could tell us the, the the website so if people are interested in checking it out. Yeah, it's St. James. I'll tell you the St. James one, but it's on all three of the parishes, their website. It's basically if you go to your parish website and then um, stjamesah.org backslash mental health resources. So it's at St. James and also St. Edna's and Our Lady of the Wayside all have that those yeah. same resources. Yeah, we literally have the exact same page. I mean, that's the beauty of working together is that we're able to kind of utilize actually the brain power of the group to create create stuff that can be spread across the, the different parishes. Great. And what, what are some of the, go ahead, Tom. Well, I was just going to say one of the one of the things I think uh, for people to know is that um, this is and I want to emphasize this is pastoral ministry. So we're not asking people to be clinicians. We're not clinicians uh, or, you know, psychiatrists or help them diagnose their problems. What we're doing is accompanying people, which basically, you know, I always say you, you don't have to be uh, an oncologist to accompany a person who's dealing with cancer. Uh, you need to know something about the issues, but um, you don't need to be a professional. And in fact, it's pr probably better that you're not a professional in terms of the mental illness one, because people need people just who are regular folks who can accompany them in a prayerful way. So um, that that's an important aspect of our training and our, you know, uh, ministry. I was going to ask uh, Deacon Tom if if you had a wish list, if you could ask the, the public and mm -hmm. let them know kind of what the needs are or where you'd have them focus and attention, maybe three to five areas, where would that be? 
Well, it, it certainly it, it's uh, in the parish, you know, I mean, uh, the, the parish is a, a place where people go to find God, right, and to reinforce their their uh, spirituality. Um, and there's many things in life that shake that up, um, you know, and, and certainly recently depression, anxiety, you know, and so people begin to question. And as, as Tracy said, you know, in the beginning, and certainly we went through it too. You, when when a major thing happens in your life, like a loved one has a mental illness, you begin to question, well, where is God in all this? You know, what what does my faith do for me, if you will? Um, and that's where we can help people find answers, you know, in dealing with those deep, deep issues that all of a sudden, you know, you're faced with. So I think um, it, for me, the parish and always has been, you know, the parish is the heart of it. Um, and so what, what we need to be, and certainly Pope Francis has called for this, is that we need to be people who are going out of our parish environment and helping them to know that God is with them. And we do that in so many different ways, or we can do it. Um, and that's by letting people know that the parish is a place that understands. So in your bulletin articles and your webpage, like they do in Arlington Heights and St. James, uh, or St. Damien's uh, Parish, you know, it, it, these are models of places that let people know that there are people there who understand, and certainly in our parish, you know, I put stuff in the bulletin, I preach about it. My wife is, um, she's retired now, but she was spiritual director, and a lot of people with mental illnesses came to her. So with, there's many different ways, models we can use to be a parish center that understands and and these said you know you're dealing with when you're when you're when you have a major mental health issue there's mental health issues that go along with that sometimes you know like depression and anxiety and so on so uh we're not trying to create silo ministries we're trying to create a ministry that involves the whole parish because we're all dealing you know we're all on that line somewhere where we're dealing with anxiety and depression um, and so it's important, I think, that uh, that parish be the center. So I guess for me, I want to get that word out to parishes, but I also want to get the diocese, you know, behind it too. Um, so we're meeting with, uh, we're trying to meet with uh, the vicariate people. And, and I think one of the disappointing things for me is that there's not enough attention paid to this in um, the diocese in terms of the health. Because, uh, mental health because we have priests who are dealing with mental health issues we have deacons who are dealing with mental health issues and we have 20 percent of the parish you know dealing with mental health issues and and you'll hear people say well i don't hear about it or i don't see it well it's one of those silent things that people because of the you know they're dealing with the old tapes the old things of you know the stigma you know so i'm not, i don't want to talk about it uh and I get that. I understand it. But, you know, whether a person comes to me quietly, I gave a talk one time and a, a woman holding a baby said to me, whispered to me, you're the first person I've told that I deal with postpartum depression mm -hmm. or whether, you know, you can speak openly about it. We got to let people know that we're there for them. And we 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 understand we can never know what we're, they're going through exactly, but we can empathize with what they're going through and help them. So again, I think the lack of uh, awareness of this is uh, a, a frustrating part of my ministry, but uh, I trust in the slow work of God. It's not all up to me. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's involved and I've seen it. I've seen the Holy Spirit work. We just have a couple of minutes left. Uh, if other parishes are looking to maybe start mental health ministry or get more information, what would you suggest? I would suggest they look at our website. We have a lot of resources on there um, and we have Spanish resources too. We have a prayer that they can use. We have, um, you know, outlines of the five night series. So there's, so they could go there and then there's, they can contact me there. My contact information is on there. Um, and certainly, you know, at the end here, we can give them, you know, my email address. Uh, and but we're more than happy to talk to anybody <laughs> why don't you get that to us right now tom so sure. yeah the email is t lambert l-a-m-b-e-r-t at o r no o-u-r-l-m-c dot org 
okay. O-U-R-L-M-C.org. The web, website is? miministry.org. M-I-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y dot org. All right. Tom and there's, there's a different, I should mention, there's a different email address on the website, and that's that works too. I get those too. Thank you so much, Tom and Tracy. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for your work in this area and being accompanying us in this important area and accompanying our parishes as they deal with this critical topic. Thank you. Thank Good you for here. having us. Yes, yeah. thank you. God bless. God bless. Yeah. For whom it has been prepared. 